Amen. And so it's good to see everyone. It's so awesome to see, you know, each person. Um, a lot of people came up on the stage. But have you noticed how smooth the transitions were? Have you noticed how even from the younger person to every single person, everything is building the same vision. Nothing is contradicting itself on the, op on the opposite. How many of you love the word that Lilia shared about offering? That was, that was awesome. I'm going to steal them and I'm going to go to some other church. I'm going to repreach that in my own way but it was a very wonderful and worship it was good to see Alexandra back from Africa amen <laughs> most of you know that Brittany she stayed there and stuff so now when you go to Africa you have somebody there and somebody's always praying for us and Brittany we believe it is going to come back anointed amen and she's going to do great things for God and so we're really really thankful. Uh, yesterday was a very special day. Yesterday uh, our pastor and his wife and both my parents had and celebrated their 30 year wedding anniversary. Let's give them a round of applause. So if you ever come around and say you know what everything you see around is people breaking up. I want to tell you something. Get yourself a different surrounding. There are people who are happy. There are people who are married, who produce a lot of bambinos and who are doing great things for God. I'm very thankful for my parents and for the pastor. I'm not sure if that's the best decision to get married on the same day, but nevertheless it worked for them and we are very happy for that. Amen. Amen. We have uh, not just miracle catch, but there are hurting people around us everywhere. And it's very important what um, Ilya mentioned during prayer what different people what uh, Pablo mentioned when he was talking and also what Lewis mentioned about when we see people who are hurting I want us to understand it's not just important to invite a person to church it's important to understand we are the church we are the healing we are the hope and God wants to use us in our limited way to touch our other people's lives I think even what uh, the testimony that Paul's Alex's brother Paul in the home group how prayer was offered and God touched something you know as big as this or as small as this whichever way you may see this but how God is able to use us in our own way to touch other people's lives. Let's not just push all the miracles to prayer line. Miracle catches when God can use you to bring people to Jesus in your workplace in your sphere of influence and pray for the sick as he directs you and guides you amen a lot of people get their hearts broken by people that's inevitable in life but it's completely different when your heart is broken for people when you break your heart not in a depressing stressful angry in mean way but when you break your heart by being exposed to what's happening to people's lives when you see how satan ruins them when you see how people innocent people suffer how people are overloaded with this sin with stress and your heart is broken not in a sense that throws you into depression but throws you into compassion god loves when people watch and observe and are not indifferent you know there was a man in the bible named Moses and Moses' story is so so amazing because God loved Moses and Moses we look at Moses we always think that Moses had a problem with anger and he did but Moses didn't have a problem with one issue he didn't have a problem with indifference when the Moses left a palace and he would go to see how other people live he didn't just want to surround himself with his own press he wanted to see what's happening outside of his arena and the Bible says when he would walk on the streets and see an Israelite being beaten by an Egyptian and Moses could have easily turned his back and said I don't know the details maybe this guy deserved it but Moses, Moses quickly somehow he calculated if I gonna defend the Israelite a slave and I'm gonna fight the Egyptian I'm angry which means this Egyptian is gonna really suffer there is a chance this Egyptian is not gonna make it I will get reported I will lose my job I will lose my home I will lose my residency in Egypt that means after I help this victim that I don't even know I am gonna completely lose my life and in a split second Moses makes a decision that it's worth the risk and no what he did was wrong he killed that man but what he did was right is he was not indifferent 
he couldn't pass the suffering of other people and turn his back like the Levite and the priest in the New Testament he saw it and something inside of him turned something inside of him said no no this is not right somehow quickly he calculated it will be worth losing everything I worked for and to let this man be killed by another man who thinks he's greater than him Moses always had the reflection about him he came out of the mountain 10 commandments 40 days spent in the glory of God comes down Israel is dancing in front of a cow and Israel abandoned God and Moses takes everything that he's there and he crushed it on the ground and he goes back to the mountain and seeks God and says God if you don't forgive these people and save these people you know what God take your eraser and blot my name out of your book I don't want to go to heaven make my make my place in heaven empty because I'm not going if they're not going God loved that about Moses he had weaknesses but being indifferent is not one of them I want our generation I want all of us to be people who are not indifferent whose heart is broken when your heart is broken by a boyfriend when your heart is broken by your financial situation when your heart is broken because somebody didn't live up to your expectations it's a pain that hurts you but there is a pain that heals you it's the pain when you're hurting for someone else when you're losing sleep not because your boyfriend left you but because there's other people who don't know God God wants to heal your pain and give you his pain the pain that actually will make you better person a pain that will renew and restore and revive your life I remember when I went to Tanzania and I went to the jungles in that country and I went and I saw how families lived in the hut when I met a pastor who has given up his last food three days ago to another family who hasn't eaten for days and this pastor saved a coca-cola in his house because a white man is going to visit him and he has not seen a white man in a very long time and remember talking to this man he was like a skeleton because he barely eats and these people serve a community where people have never ever heard about the gospel and this man through the translator says we came to this community I came with three women to evangelize and he says right in front of my eyes all three women were raped and he says and the man in that community which was simply huts they told me straight up we will kill you and we'll kill everybody that is gonna preach this new Jesus in our community and he says 17 years ago that's when it happened he says today I'm still preaching the gospel and most of those men are already saved You know you, you stand there and your heart is shattered you're broken you're thinking about your problems you're putting them on the scales you're thinking about the pain the sacrifice people are praying and your heart is broken but this brokenness is different and being broken by the problems this brokenness makes you feel sense of purpose sense of meaning sense of perspective sense of compassion sense of I want to give my life for others I don't want to live for myself if you want to protect your heart from being broken by others set your heart to be broken for others and God will take care of your heart so it's not broken by other people can somebody say amen come out of your comfort into a place of compassion it's very important to understand that if we are not serving God if we are not living for God not just believing but if we're not selling our soul to God if we're not his servants there is no neutral ground the other side of not serving God is being slave to sin and to the devil if you don't want to be God's servant you automatically become sin's slave it's not God punishing you saying if you don't want to serve me I'll make you pay it's just how life works life has no neutral ground there is God and there is the devil there is light and there is darkness there is kingdom of God and there is a kingdom of the devil there is Holy Spirit and there are demons there is heaven and there is hell and I'm sorry no purgatory there is one and there is another and there is no middle ground the problem we have as people sometimes and I find that but this is the thought that constantly motivates me to serve God is whenever I feel like serving God is too hard I always remind myself it's always harder being devil's slave I'll rather have God as my master instead of Satan as my monster 
I'll rather have Holy Spirit as my comforter than the devil as my condemner. I'll rather sacrifice but those sacrifices only feel like sacrifices for a moment. For a God who created me, loved me, thinks about me and cares about me and had his son die to death for me then serve somebody who's only out for one thing to destroy my life, kill my life and drag me to hell with him. So I want to encourage each one of you the price of serving God is never too high compared to the other side. The privilege of working with people constantly is you get always reminded of the high price people pay when they become sin slave. You constantly get broken with how devastating, how painful and how deep in misery Satan can bring someone so handsome someone so beautiful, someone so gifted and someone so talented and it makes you go back into your own prayer room, makes you go back to your own church and give you that fire and passion to say God I served you because well because you love me but now God I serve you because I really 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 love you everything I had all the problems God I just want to thank you because I've recognized my problems is other people's prayer requests the things I struggle with other people dream to have. God I recognize you know the things that you have blessed me with how good you've been to me and I am so undeserving. I will be your slave, your servant as long as I live. If you protect me from Satan's nasty, dirty, horrible hands crawling in my soul. You protect my soul God and I will live for you. Make that resolution with God. Make the decision with God. If you're suffering today, if sin's grip has broken your soul, if life's pain has caught up to you, if the burdens or heaviness are weighing you down and you can no longer bear it, don't play games with God by saying, God remove it so I can live for myself. There is no for myself. I can demonstrate it to you in a few seconds by turning off the lights and you will see immediately when light is gone darkness creeps in in a split second. It's not because light leaves and light tells darkness or light punishes this place by saying well if you reject me I will pay you. No it's just how life works. There is no neutral ground. When you reject God being your master and you say I want to do whatever I want to do and want to keep God as an insurance policy or as a spare tire. Something happens you immediately move to the other side. Jesus said he who doesn't gather with me scatters. That's just how life works. I want to challenge you today. Don't sit on the fence. Don't live a life in the middle life is too short when you serve the devil when you went clubbing when you went drinking you went all in you knew you knew it's bad you knew it's gonna destroy you both feet in you went in you didn't know how to dance you learned how to dance in the club and now you forgot all the dancing in the church you didn't have any money yet you found money to pay for other people you always went all out that is part of who our generation is if we go for something we go completely all out but when we come to God we become so reserved. When we come to God many times we become so I'm just gonna give a little. I'm just gonna raise my hand if Alexander really sings the song that I really like and I'm in the spirit then I will lift my hands. My friend kick the devil in the curb and tell him listen if I served you and you abused me I will serve God and he will bless me. God loves us. Amen. But we have to be passionate for him. We have to live for him. You may say, what is, what are you, what is your message? Well, that was my message. I'm just going to share a few more things and, uh, and then we're going to pray. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 and verse 3. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. Almost every place I go to, um, I have this very classic famous message that I preach now about faith from this part of the scripture 
especially in a lot of Russian churches every new place I go to I always preach this message first about the fourth dimension and some of we've heard it we talk about it every single week Ilya preached a fantastic message on Sunday those of you who are on Wednesday how many of you on Sunday how many of you enjoyed the message on Sunday let's give the Lord a round of applause for Ilya and so I would encourage every one of you who missed it please re-listen to it it will bless your faith and so we talk a lot about mind and how God wants to use us to put vision and faith but today I want to take just this verse this part of the verse the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters and then God said the Spirit of God hovering God said we'll just have three simple points the Spirit of God it's interesting that before there was creation before there was beauty before there was man God's Spirit was already here sometimes we think that God's Spirit the Holy Spirit came after Jesus went to heaven and uh, speaking in tongues came in and that's when the Holy Spirit came on earth it is true that's when the Holy Spirit was poured out on earth but he was already here before the earth we know of today even was here it seems like the Holy Spirit has a special interest in the planet earth and its inhabitants before God brought man on the earth God prepared everything for the man when children are born parents buy a crib parents buy diapers they have baby showers they buy all the clothes they already put the name they have a special room in the house before even the baby comes on the scene everything is prepared and parents are positioning and preparing their work schedule preparing everything to begin to take care of this little creature in the house called the baby same thing happened in the scripture we see the Holy Spirit comes on the scene the Holy Spirit is already here before creation happens before men and women are created before people are placed in the paradise before people commit sin before anything the Holy Spirit comes in here first and then we see miracles then we see changes with this mess that was here on the earth at the time where the earth was without form and without and was void it's important to understand that religion is what we have left when the Holy Spirit leaves the room religion is when you accumulate your mind with so much knowledge about God but your life doesn't change religion is when you can quote the Bible but your life is not different religion cannot change you Holy Spirit can the Holy Spirit is God and the Holy Spirit is on earth the Holy Spirit was on earth before you came here and the Holy Spirit has a very specific interest in you he had an interest in our planet when it was a mess it tells me he has a special interest in its inhabitants when they are in mess as well he doesn't just love us when our life is pretty when our life is good when our life is organized he loves us when our life is dark without void and without form he cares for us and he has a special interest in our life holy spirit wants to he's initiating a relationship with you our duty is very simple to respond no prayer I can pray, no fasting I can hold could ever make Holy Spirit want me. All of the prayers I pray, all of the fastings you do, all of the sacrifices I give and you and I all of us together, all of that doesn't create His love for me. It doesn't stir His love for me. All of that I do only responds to the love He already has for me we must understand that because if you're a young man and you're single and there is a pretty lady that sits on the behind you or in front of you or maybe god forbid next to you and you know she has no interest in you whatsoever she has no interest in you whatsoever brother it's good that she said yes <laughs> it's okay it's okay it's okay i'm sure she loves you i've heard young men 
who wanted someone's attention so bad that they did, did things that actually physically hurt them. We always make fun of our uncle who went and this, the rumor goes it's a tale it's not true story that he was drinking gasoline to prove to my aunt Larissa that she was worthy of his attention. <laughs> People do crazy things when they are interested in someone and nothing is more painful than when you are interested in someone and they're not interested in you. I have a news for you today the Holy Spirit you don't have to do anything to make him interested in you. He's already interested in you. You only have to respond. He already loves you. He wants you. Your duty is to respond. You may say, Vlad, I don't feel like he is interested in me. I don't feel like he knows me. He does. When you were born, he was waiting your arrival. He knew when you were going to be born, in your pleasures he whispered to you in your pain he screamed to you when your life would be in shambles he would be there trying to tug you in and bring you back in he was the invisible person that was always there even when you didn't want anything to do with him and he was the party that was always interested in you and you were always saying i'm interested in someone else if you ever had that happen to you when you were interested in someone who was interested in someone else, you know the emotional, emotional turmoil. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit feels when we do not respond back but turn our back and do whatever we want to do. I want to challenge each person today. The Holy Spirit has initiated the relationship. You have to either respond, you have to either accept or decline. Accept the invitation. Your life will never be the same. He is a person worth knowing. He loves you. In our mind, in my mind, I cannot comprehend who Holy Spirit is. I, I can receive from Him but I cannot fully. I went for a prayer walk before the service to the Columbia River and just, just kind of start talking to the Holy Spirit, start praying and I was just start crying and, and part of me felt like I know the Holy Spirit and God gave me this very simple picture. He said, Vlad, he asked me this question and I felt in my heart does Ilya's and Mariana's baby know who Ilya is? That baby has no idea what Ilya does, who he is, what he knows, what he's capable of. Yet at the same time that baby is fully aware of who he is. That baby's mind is so small it cannot comprehend mortgage insurance payment cannot comprehend how email works how emojis work that baby's mind is so small yet it's so small and Ilya's is so big that baby is still fully capable of receiving his love and without that love that she doesn't understand but still can receive she won't live that's how the Holy Spirit is your tiny little baby but he's your caregiver he loves you so much and you don't have to understand everything about him to accept him into your heart can somebody say amen? amen? Not only, not only the Holy Spirit loves us and we should accept that invitation and build a relationship with Him. But I want to challenge those of us who have a prayer time and that prayer time is fixed. In your prayer time, don't make your prayer about your prayer. Your prayer has to have a goal and the prayer cannot be the goal of prayer just like if you are married and you go on a date the date is not the goal of a date if you make the date the goal of the date you will quickly spend your date snapchatting your food instead of talking to the person you're dating with and that's how many people many times I've noticed that even in my own prayer I will be very transparent with you in the since our conference last time because we started morning prayers here at five o'clock and because you know our pastor is always here seeing other people it encourages me to be constantly here and it encourages me secondly not to be asleep during prayer because when you're by yourself praying it is so easy to let the Lord lay, lay me down to sleep kind of a prayer <laughs> but when you see other people and you see the pastor you see other and you will always pray so you would pray for two hours and I could you know proudly say that since the conference the first conference we had you know I don't miss maybe one or twice I've been very consistent and I would pray from five to seven 
but at the same time I have another confession to make that my goal was when the prayer is done seven o'clock hit I'm done adios amigo and then my Jesus time is over let's I'll see you next morning and then you get through the prayer however whether you touch the Holy Spirit or not well that doesn't matter the most important God, pastor saw you and you were a prayer and your pastor duty check as a pastor your, your duty two hours you're done and you're done and the Holy Spirit that is not the goal imagine you're going on a date and you sit there for 45 minutes the food didn't arrive you're like well the 45 minutes is left I gotta go I'll see you next Thursday at the same time right the same time I love you that's how many people treat their prayer we make prayer focus of prayer but the Holy Spirit wants to be the focus of prayer it's good to pray consistently it's good to pray regularly but at the same time it's more important to make him the center of prayer and then you won't watch at the clock and even when the prayer is done and you have free time instead of going to some other things that we usually go you say you know what I want to go talk to my friend I want to sneak into the room and talk to the Holy Spirit I want to open up a Bible you will say well I read the Bible in the morning so what I checked the Facebook in the morning see it's interesting how the perspective about prayer and the Holy Spirit is the perspective we should shift on social media because you check social media once and you don't have the thought going to your mind well I checked the social media in the morning why am I even tempted to check it again nothing is new there no we go again because it becomes a hobby and it's not a rule it's something of interest and the Holy Spirit wants to take a place where he is not just locked in the prayer but he is someone after we leave the prayer we think about him and throughout the day we want to still have time because we're not praying for the sake of prayer we are praying for the sake of relationship for the sake of revival and for the sake of knowing the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen so this is challenging those of you who don't have a prayer time establish your relationship with the Holy Spirit don't pray to pray pray to know him don't pray to fulfill a duty pray to fellowship with him pray to understand him and for him to fill you with his love the Spirit of God was hovering was hovering over the darkness the Holy Spirit was incubating brooding because he's omnipresent this wasn't that holy spirit like an like an eagle was just swinging and flying around the earth and making these endless circles because he was everywhere present with his presence that word they're hovering is the same word that is used when a chicken sits over the eggs and they churn into little chickens means the Holy Spirit set above the globe and above the planet earth and he literally saturated with his presence the whole mess that was going on and didn't let it go what I want us to notice here is this is when we establish a relationship with the Holy Spirit our problems will not be hovering over us we will be hovering over them our darkness our emptiness heartbreak the issues our weaknesses will not be bombarding and sitting over us with the Holy Spirit we are sitting above those problems and therefore they will be changed because they're not in you but they are under you you can't change a problem that you are in bondage to you can only change the problem that God places under your feet God first wants to place the problem under your feet but that only happens the Spirit of God was hovering you and I are limited finite beings we can't hover over our problems you send us most of the girls are scared of spiders we're not even talking about demons now a spider and and she screams like mother-in-law died or something and it's hysteric because we as humans we are intimidated shocked scared quickly anxiety depression and disappointment when life's challenges come our way with the Holy Spirit you will always be above and not beneath can somebody say amen Holy Spirit is the influence that fills you with this invisible power to be above your problem not beneath your problem 
the Bible says don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit how to be filled with the Holy Spirit the word filled there means continuously fill yourself Holy Spirit lives in you already but you continuously fill yourself nobody those of you who struggled with drinking before or who uh, who were alcoholics before you know how you get drunk you don't sit at work and alcohol jumps from the bar takes a taxi knocks through the door gets through the secretary gets through all the hoops jumps on your table the pop right the the little cork thing pops right open and the water supernaturally opens in and then your mouth un, without your permission opens out and the alcohol goes in and when you're done it goes out that's how many of us think about the Holy Spirit is I'm going to sit I'm going to do absolutely nothing and the Holy Spirit from heaven who knows me he will come and he will shake me and bake me and he will fill me and I'm gonna go walk around like a superman that sounds more like demons not the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit won't do that you have to make a choice you go to the bar you pay for the drink you open it and you fill yourself with and you don't feel anything right away but after a few hours you begin to feel what you lost control you begin to feel what you are happier you begin to feel what you put a band-aid on the problem you didn't really fix it but you feel you feel the effect of the influence in your body you can't explain it how does it work but you the fact is it works that's exactly how it works with the Holy Spirit except with the Holy Spirit when we spend time with him we don't lose control we find control and instead of being happily because we pretend to be happy but our problems don't go away actually he goes in and he begins to fix our problems instead of getting getting a DUI and a fight with somebody we actually get a promotion and we help somebody we fight for someone instead of getting drunk in the evening no we get filled with the Holy Ghost in the morning so we can last the whole day God wants you to fill yourself with his presence alcohol is the devil substitute for not being filled with the Holy Spirit alcohol is the devil in a liquid form liquid form devil you don't believe in devil open a bottle of alcohol that is the devil right there it hurts you physically hurts you emotionally I've met countless young women who lost their virginity and end up in somebody's bed and don't know who slept with them only because of alcohol people who lose their lives because of that and my goal is not to give a lecture on alcohol that is not the message today my point is this please do not reject the Holy Spirit because then Satan will give you a bottle and bottle will make you poor bottle will take your license bottle will take your make you an addictive it will just bring your life into shambles and the Holy Spirit will lift you up he will give you a blessing he will give you strength and the most important he will give you control even the problems will be falling apart but you walk around with a sense of hovering over your mess and then you will see that turn into a miracle and the blessing of God can somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah God is good and all the time be filled with Holy Spirit you don't need religion we need the Holy Spirit not just to talk about him but to know him I don't want to talk about him when he's not in the room like he's not in the room we want to talk about him like he is in the room amen because he is with us he wants to touch us he wants to help us heal us and restore us and revive us I want you to rise to your feet and come to the front and we're going to take time to draw closer to the Holy Spirit if you're saying glad today I need to get closer to the Holy Spirit just let's begin to come begin to draw near to him and we are going to draw closer and then pray that God will begin to bring shift and change in our life in Jesus name